I found myself on a back road, late at night, with a flat tire. It's not snowing heavily. Well, not yet. But there are flurries dancing in the beam of my headlights. Okay, headlight. I still haven't fixed the passenger side headlight after I hit that deer. I take the flight off. I hate having anything to do with my car. I am male, and so I am obliged to pretend I know something about cars. I mean, if there's steam coming out from under the hood, I will open the hood and stir the engine, just like I am diagnosing the problem. All the time, I am hoping someone will stop by and help, or at least offer me a shotgun so I put the car out of my misery. But hey, I can handle a flat. I believe that's why I find the tractor books by Roger Welsh so appealing. The first rule of writing is to write what you know. If you write all you know, and you don't learn anything new, then what is there to write about? Walsh is a retired college professor from Nebraska who is about as mechanical as myself. He's never even changed the oil in his car. He still doesn't. And so what could be more natural than writing a book about how to get a rusted piece of iron running again? Old Tractors and the Men Who Love Them is about rebuilding a 1937 Alice Chalmers WC tractor. Welsh is a folklorist and humorist who has appeared on the CBS News Sunday morning program with a segment called Postcards from Nebraska. There's a lot old Raj doesn't know, and he's the first to admit it. Okay, so I don't know many of the answers, explains Roger. Thing is, most books like this are written by experts who have forgotten the kinds of problems beginners like me run into. He may not have all the answers, but he knows all the questions. So why restore an old tractor? Well, for one reason, everything is right there. You don't even have to lean over to reach the oil filter. It's at waist level, right where any sensible person would expect it to be. And Alice WC has exactly four wires, one to each part plug, which sits right out in plain sight. You don't need a lot of tools to work on them. It was understood by the manufacturer that these tractors were going to be worked on by a farmer without a lot of time and owned a couple of wrenches, a screwdriver with a broken tip, and a hammer. Sometimes, it is just as important to know what not to do, and Roger gives many examples of his mistakes. For example, you should never eat peanuts in the shop. Anyone who has ever had red squirrels in the attic can identify with the why. These little pests will stash peanuts in transmissions, valve covers, rag boxes, and everywhere else they can squirm. Here's some good solid advice for a mechanical novice. Walsh covers the basics like the shop, tools, safety equipment, and resources. He does all this with a quirky sense of humor, observations in life, and how to manage to save marriage while dragging home yet another pile of orange rust. He makes tractor restoring sound therapeutic and fun, and heck, I feel like even I could do it. If you enjoy this book, be sure to check out his follow-up, Butsed Tractors and Rusty Knuckles. Thing is, learning is a process. Hmm, maybe instead of writing what I know, I'll write about what I want to know. <laughs>